So many emotions. I mean, it just feels like you're shedding the hormones, but also shedding emotions. There is a lot of like just bursting into tears. And um, it was as difficult as I expected in the, the ways that I'd read about in the videos that I watched. For sure, I, would, I had these expectations that came true like, no sleep, breastfeeding's gonna hurt, you know, those types of things. But the emotions that I had were unexpected. I mean, at first there was the high of giving birth and like, we're a family now, she's here, this is amazing. Um, you know, I have so much love for my, my husband and his child and my family and the world at large. And then you come home, it kind of wears off, it gets difficult. And um, something you mentioned in your course, which I had uh, told my husband practically from day one was like, I don't, um, I don't feel bonded to her or anything. And I think that that's uh, a myth that we really need to break because uh, it's like a pet. It's like this little pet that you have and you just need to keep it alive and you need to get it used to you. And they don't give you anything. They can't even focus their eyes on you. And um, it just felt miserable. And um, I did allow myself this moment of like, yeah, this feels pretty normal. I, I, I feel like later there's going to be stuff <laughs> that's cool. Um, but right now it kind of sucks. So there was that, but there were also weird emotions that I had that I wasn't expecting. Like my husband all of a sudden meant so much more to me. Like you're not just this person I love. You're a person who can protect us. Without you, I can't do this. And I need you to stay safe and I need you to stay healthy. He like threw his back out in the first week, probably from like rocking the baby, He'd never done it before, right? And he um, couldn't help me for like a day. He was just in bed and I just sobbed all day because I was like, you're not okay. So I'm not okay. So the baby's not okay. Um, but then I just started to get weird paranoid feelings that um, like, I don't want you to drive on the freeway I know you have to do it, so I can't do anything about it, but I don't want it. Um, I, I just was worried about stuff like earthquakes that I don't love, but happen anyway. And um, just things happening to break up the good, good goodness that I was experiencing. Like the other shoe's gonna drop, like for sure something bad is gonna happen. And, um, and then it just kind of went away. So the thoughts were intrusive and then they just kind of left. I mean, I, I suspect that this was related to postpartum depression and anxiety. Um, the anxiety didn't fully go away for a while. Um, you know, I uh, started sort of like picking at my skin and doing unfortunate kind of things that I had to get a fidget spinner and sort of um, develop these habits from the anxiety. Um, but the depression and that feeling of intense fear did pass. I have um, a tendency, and I think because of my anxiety, but also, you know, my temperament, I'm, um, I'm a learner, you know, I, I read a lot, <laughs> I do a lot of my own research. I try very, very, very hard to check myself and to look at the sources and to, you know, um, uh, and I come from a science family too. So it's just, it's how I was raised, right? Um, but <laughs> the, the, the sort of, there's a, there's a balcony and a basement to each strength. And the, the basement of the strength that I have to constantly collect input is that I keep a lot in my head and uh, it can get very confusing in there. And just full of information and there's so much to know and there's conflicting information. Um, and then there's just really too, too much information. There's a point where there's too much information online, especially about parenting. And what I wanted was like some reasonable kind voice that can do this for me, right? Um, so that especially now when I need someone to, you know, metaphorically hold me, right? I like. To, to, so that I can let go and just let someone else do the thinking. Someone 
you know, smart, <laughs> someone who knows how to do research, somebody who um, knows how to present it in a way that's real and authentic. Um, and that those were all the, the the feelings that I got from from right from the start and just your parenting mojo is like this. I think this will deliver. I think this will deliver there. Um, so I just wanted someone else to hold the knowledge so that I didn't have to. I, I wouldn't go down these rabbit holes anymore. I think um, having people who encourage um, parents to look at their own needs, identify, label them, um, and really take a deep look at how that can create a better connection with your child, with your partner, with anyone really. I mean, this has to do with parenting, but this is a life thing, you know? Um, that that was incredibly um, meaningful to me. Um, and it's something that I'm gonna take with me outside of this course again into my life. Um, but I think to going back to that, those feelings of isolation that I had, I really wanted to find a community um, of people who seem to share the same values that I do about how to respect your how to respectfully raise your child, right? Um, what does that mean? What are the words that we say? What are the things that we do? What does it look like in the day to day? I can have an idea of what that is, but um, how do you do that? You know, it's something that I was lacking. And there's there's so many things that you know you feel intuitively, but you don't know how to verbalize what you like about something like well I, I i want to be a kind parent okay what does that mean right so um it's taking those values and really putting like a framework around them um with people who are also who i know are also learning in the same way that i am um looking to better themselves looking to perhaps um looking to be those types of parents um, and raise the kind of children who um will quite honestly like make the world a kinder place so it really um i, I really was so lacking that especially in the, during the pandemic and and felt like i got that from this course i feel calmer i really do um i feel like um now when we are in a situation with the baby that's not working for us or for the baby um i feel like now i have almost have permission to take a moment and to say what what are her needs right now what are my needs right now how can we get both of these needs met or you know what's going on in the environment right now that's not working for her what's going on with her that's a little different um or me or you know so adjusting um, and taking a moment to think about that. Okay, so instead of, uh, you know, leaving her in her uh, swing with the, bas uh, with the pacifier in her mouth that she keeps spitting out and we keep putting in 15 times, maybe she doesn't want to be in the swing. We just want her to be in the swing because we want to be able to do other stuff. But is there a way that we can hold her and do other stuff? Um, maybe she just needs a little cut, some cuddling and then she can be calm in the swing. You know, so how can we make those adjustments so that we can all have a better time? That was not, um, I didn't even have that language before. So I feel like that's a big, um, big benefit to how I'm approaching things now. And I've noticed, um, cause I've, I, I, I use this language now and I've noticed my husband being like, what do you need right now, baby? And just, <laughs> which I think is really cool. I feel like, you know, everything changes so quickly with babies, right? It's like, you feel like you've got it. I got, I got this, I got this. And then they change or something. I don't got changes. this anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's all new. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I'm anxious about what's going to come up. Like even just having a toddler, like I'm anxious about that. And sure, I've been a nanny for toddlers, but I've never had my own and it's going to be very different. And so the unknown is always so much scarier than the reality. And so I think just knowing that there's tools out there, knowing that I'm not alone too. Like there are people who care very deeply about making um, this experience easier on everyone, everyone, my child, as well as me, right? So, um, and not just sort of treating it as like a problem to be solved. Um, you know, it's, 
just so much of what I see is like, you have this commodity, you have this thing and just throw everything at it. And here's all these products and here's all this information, um, which can be helpful, but it, that's all it is, is sort of information. There's no, um, it, it, it doesn't help to process your feelings about it, right? Um, and it's just sort of this band-aid. And so feeling like, okay, there's something out there that I believe in um, and that will help me not just now, but later, if I can come back to it, um, you know, I can, I can do it. I can do this. <laughs> I don't know the problems will be yet, um, but I'm fairly confident that I'll be able to handle them to some degree. <laughs> And this coming from a person who tends to think the worst that everything <laughs> is going to happen. This, this, this confidence is, I mean, it's, it's a 180, right? It's a, um, it, it's a very different outlook where you are right now. And, uh, and one that's kind of grounded in this understanding of your needs and understanding of this other person's needs as well. My therapist told me yesterday that I have a mom voice now. And I'm like, what is that? And she said, it's just a calm voice. Like you just, you have a calmness about you now. I thought that was cool.